Welcome, guys, to the Task Cast live from Dubai. This is our first episode, Task One, as we refer to them. I'm your host, Kareem Karmous, uh, and I have with me the eighth wonder of the world, Ali. Hi, how are you? And I have my bald brother here, Timmy. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, guys. We're really, really excited. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, today, we're just going to be kind of bouncing some ideas off of each other, just kind of uh, shooting the shits, as we say. And uh, we hope that you guys enjoy it. Uh, let's first start by getting to know each other. Um, Ali, you want to start with a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Ali. Um, I'm an accountant. I moved to Dubai in approximately November 2021. I brought the family over, the wife over, and just living life and enjoying it. And what does your family consist of? I've got three kids, a boy, a girl, and a boy, and obviously the missus. Um, She's probably the hardest one to deal with, I'm sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> Coming She's not going to watch this episode, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, she will be, so probably be in the basement so be, tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, man, just, uh, you know, try, getting, still getting used to the lifestyle in Dubai. Always discover something new every day, meeting new people. So we're enjoying it so, so far. So you're coming up on two years being in yeah, Dubai. Yeah, um, uh, next month or end of this month, you can say, middle of December, sort of. Uh, we'll be here for a, uh, two years and we're planning on staying at least another year and hopefully, you know, into the foreseeable future. All right, I want to get back to that saying for only a year, but uh, let's hear from Timmy. Timmy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, guys. Um, I'm um, an entrepreneur, so I've come into the uh, country. Started coming in around 2017, 2018. And um, what, I, um, what I saw was uh, the country still using checks. And uh, I thought, hey, look, this might be a great opportunity to uh, Are get Are you doing a checks. business plug already? Yeah. Oh, first right. episode, he's already plugging and, the business. And uh, <laughs> so I permanently, uh, I, I came into the country uh, with the company in 2019. It was more of a consulting. I moved my family over uh, September 2019. Um, and at the time, we had three kids. My wife was pregnant with our fourth. Um, this was close to covid um, You've got ten then, now, right? Uh, oh, my <laughs> wife wishes I had ten, right? Um, but I have five kids now, um, so we've been here for four. You know, as a family, we've been here for four years. Um, like Ali, it was, it was, hey, we might stay here for five years and then look to go back. But uh, interesting enough, um, we really love it here, and um, and every time we the family go back to Australia and they come back. It brings the love of UAE even more. So, um, well, I, for me, I love it. I feel like this is my country, my home, um, and I want to stay as long as I can. And we're going to talk about that love in Dubai in just a few minutes, but mm. both of you guys have brought something up interesting about your intentions to come. Seems only short term. Why, why wasn't it I'm going to move to Dubai and make that my home? Uh, it's a big step moving to Dubai. Um, a lot of people um, in Australia have that goal, but to actually go that step and obviously it's not cheap to move to Dubai and once you get outside of your comfort zone it's your life changes and it actually takes a good six months to a year to get used to the new lifestyle and then you may you know at the beginning making friends you know meeting like-minded people especially the first few months you feel like it's never going to happen and then it just organically happens you meet a school friend like you know your uh, maybe your daughter or your son's uh, uh, their parents or, you know, a teacher introduces you to another parent, you I meet someone. you were hanging out with your kids' friends. I'm yeah, glad you could. well, <laughs> <laughs> correct. So the thing is, you're just not sure how you adjust to the lifestyle. And then one day it's like, hey, it's my home. I love it here. And then, you know, you go back to Australia, you know, you miss your family and whatnot. But then Dubai just pulls you back, you know, a lot of flexibility. The weather's consistent all year round. So, but, you know, you've, at the end of the day, you haven't got your whole family here. So there's always that temporary nature to living in Dubai. Um, but I'm hoping to, you know, make it a forever home. But, you know, we all have family. We have parents back home. Depends on their health. Depends on our health. You know, kids are doing well now. Things change. So that's why I feel like... The and you moved here from Australia, is that correct? From Australia, yeah. Okay, directly awesome. to I'm acting like I don't know you, but just uh, for, for, the, sake of, <laughs> no for the sake of our listener, you know, yeah. so just uh, an awesome. And you're originally? Uh, I'm, so I'm first generation Australian. So born in Australia. Um, so I'm first generation, my son's second generation, but I'm Lebanese. So both my parents are from Lebanon. My mum was, my, my was born in Kuwait, but she's Lebanese. And my dad's Lebanese, born in Lebanon. 
Got you. I'm sorry if you were trying to leave that part out. No, no, nah, nah, man. I'm happy, <laughs> proud. Uh, you know, loud and proud to be Lebanese. Don't worry. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Very tall too. How tall are you, Ali? Because people can't tell just by listening to us. Uh, let's just say six foot nine, and that's my real height, not an NBA player <laughs> height where they tell you they're seven three, and then they measure them without shoes and they're six five. Yeah. I'm not looking for a major contract where I have to, you know, inflate my statistics. So I'm six nine. Guaranteed. <laughs> and Timmy can attest to it when we walk around with Ali in Dubai. All oh, I always feel like he's. Ki- I always feel like he's kid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what about you, Timmy? Why'd you? So look, you know, when I think about it, is everybody comes to the UAE initially for for money, and let's be honest, right? It's for money, right? Tax free. You know, nobody likes paying tax in in you know, especially in Western countries. Um, but um, I love paying taxes. Yeah, everyone loves. Just paying in case taxes, you're listening, right? Biden. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear in the, case the IRS en- is enthusiasm in your voice. I love taxes. <laughs> so, he, so you know, you come in, you think, okay, tax-free money, you're going to save, and uh, your aim is for next two or three years or five years is to save as much. I think what happens to a lot of expats is they really enjoy the lifestyle, you know. And if you think about it, I mean, I'm. A similar story with Ali, you know, I'm a first generation. Quick, sorry to cut you off, but can you define this term expats? Because we don't use that term in America. And I don't know if you guys use that term no, in we Australia. Do. Uh, I, it's a term I picked up when I moved here. Yeah. So we yeah. don't use so that So effectively often. an expat, anyone pretty much coming from a Western, you know. We, or, we or, call or, them in America immigrants. Yeah. <laughs> and I think in Dubai well, people are just well, don't want to be called I think, I think expat is something because, you know, in the UAE, everyone has a temporary residence, Right. At the moment, correct, right, and we'll get we'll get and to so those details. And so that's why I think that the term expat has been coined, is because you are a, a effectively a temporary worker, you know, or whether you're a business, you know, you've got your own business or properties or whatever, but you're still temporary. You know, the government can revoke it. You're not a citizen um, at this stage. There's no, you know, you can't be a citizen, but who knows? Yeah. I hope one day if the UAE does, I'd be putting my hand up to become a citizen. Um, but you know, I, if I look at if I look at like why, so in other words, UAE's, you'd be willing to pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much tax here, man. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if uh, yeah. one day you're going to become a citizen, you're going to have to put your hand in your pocket. Yeah, maybe <laughs> if they if they do it right. He's always uh, got his hand in his pocket when I see him walking. Right. Right. <laughs> so if you think about it this way, man, it's just imagine imagine you come to a country, and all of a sudden it's safe, yeah. it's clean. Everything, as a Muslim, it's halal. You know, I grew up in an area um, different to Ali. I grew up in a non-Muslim area. Also Australia, right? Yeah, also Australia. Okay. But I, uh, I, uh, so I have an Egyptian background. My parents are Egyptian. I'm first generation as well, Australian. Are you um, Egyptian with the name Timmy? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. And I'm not going to do it right now. Okay. Okay? It has to do with Let's wait till we have two listeners right, that's and then right. we can do that. That's probably and, um, <laughs> You know, my, my parents, you know, uh, they, they wanted to integrate in Australia and, you know, Aussies back then could not pronounce Arab names yeah. to save their lives. So they gave my sister and I English names. And uh, unfortunately, my dad chose Timmy. It's not uh, short for Timothy, right? No, it's Timmy. It's just and Timmy on your birth certificate. Yep, unfortunately. Wow. And, um, but people remember it. Everyone, you know, I'm probably the uh, only th- Arab... Timmy, you need know, you know, yeah. I think it's the only Timmy in the whole right. world. There can't your be anybody who's... Do you Timmy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so if you think about the lifestyle, right, that's what keeps me here, right? And I think not just as a, from, a, from, a, from a Muslim perspective, but even a lot of non-Muslims, I've heard the same thing. It's the lifestyle, yeah. right? It's the ease, you know? It's, um, you know, order anything on, on an app. Right, and there's so many discounts and things you can do. There's malls are actually fun. Yeah, you know, back home I hated going to. We, I mean, you guys call them malls, we call them shopping centers. Yeah. Right, hated it's as a, a man, hated shopping centers. It's a chore. It's a chore. But here in the UAE, shopping centers can be or malls can be fun. Right. Um, so I love the fact, right, that there's so much to do in the UAE and that it's open almost all night. Yeah, yeah, right. That's really nice. So, what about you, Karim? Uh, so, I am uh, born and raised in America in a state called North Carolina. It's a yeah. state that, if you haven't been to the states, most people don't know it. When I introduce myself here, Sweet like, how about are you from New York? 
Are you from? No, not that sweet home Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> This is Carolina, so Carolina. Is that the song? I don't know, man. I there's just a lot, know the, of, there's I a lot just, of North Carolina. I just know the college basketball team, and that's about it, man. Yeah, yeah cool. So it. I went to NC State, which yeah. is actually, uh, you know, they're very well known in, in sports. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina State yeah. University. Uh, and I'm from a city called Raleigh. Yeah. Uh, so Chapel Hill, I know you know UNC Chapel Hill. That's yeah. the, you know, 30-minute drive. Uh, both of my parents are Egyptian and moved to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, just a few, like a year before I was born. Nice. Um, and so I moved here. Uh, I left. I thought you would find this interesting. I left January 26th, 2020. And while I was waiting for my flight, I got the notification on my phone that Kobe Bryant had gotten in that oh, helicopter accident. That was surreal. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was uh, really shocking, really yeah. sad. Uh, my mom was bawling because we were leaving. And then I started tearing up because Kobe, she's like, oh, you finally have emotions. I'm like, no, it's because Kobe's <laughs> gone. <laughs> but, Man uh, logic right there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, I came here with my wife. Uh, me and her have been married for, uh, for 10 years. And we had one daughter at the time. Um, and uh, we've had two more kids uh, since living here in Dubai. So we've been here almost four years. Um, and uh, I moved here originally. Like uh, I, I think me and you, we didn't come here necessarily for work like a lot of people do because we have our own businesses that we run back home. Correct. Uh, and so I really, really came here. I think the initial reason that I came is just kind of to get out of that bubble that the Western world is in and to just teach just to be around more traditional values yeah. um but after being here for a few months uh, i think the safety is what's kept me here yeah. like no matter what happens i mean it is so safe here you just can't describe yeah. in the states i'm very very nervous when you go out for the kids keep them within arm's length things like that uh here if if my daughter wants to go get a snack or something in the grocery store she can go three four aisles over and get it and i don't even have to worry whatsoever yeah. i swear to god just two days ago i sent my daughter on monday i sent my daughters into the uh into the uh gas station convenience store while i was pumping gas and i went in and one of the attendants is holding my youngest she's two and a half years old is holding her and walking her around the store and showing her Mm. and like i found that so lovely yeah but i think we can all attest if that happened back home we'd be like ready to fight like why are you holding my daughter why you yeah yeah. feel a bit crazy a bit uneasy you know yeah yeah. i remember kareem like when i came into the country uh, so we moved, I moved into Dubai Hills Estate with my family. It was just open, Dubai Hills Estate. And have a lovely park, fantastic park, right? If you ever, if you ever, if you never tried it, go to Dubai Hills Park. Yep, I can attest that. Now, similar to the States, you know, we keep, we, we've become like helicopter parents in, the, in, in, in Australia, right? You keep your kids close, there's so much danger, you know, kids can get grabbed, attacked, whatever. So... I remember going to the park and seeing kids unsupervised. And that shocked my wife and I. Yet I remember that's how I grew up. Right. Yeah. You know, in the eight, I mean, I'm older than you guys, but in the 80s, that's how we grew up. You were playing in the 80s? You were playing in the <laughs> 80s. No devices, none of that crap. Right. And we were literally, you know, parents would say, come back before dark. Right. And we went to the parks, explored the creeks, whatever we could. Yeah. Right. And it took a while to adjust back. I actually felt like I, I could raise my kids with some of those 80s and 90s values of, you know, giving them a little bit independence. And then, you know, we started trusting, like my wife and I started trusting my son and daughter. They could go to the pools by themselves. They could go to a, the coffee shop uh, by themselves. Um, and, you know, if it was Australia, I'd be, I'd be more hesitant. Yeah, definitely. No, uh, I agree 100%. To, uh, to do that. And, I mean, we, this is, a, and, you know, if you look at Australia versus U.S., the difference is it's gun laws. We have no guns yeah. in Australia. Right. Right? And even then I still would be worried about this. But I think even if you took the guns out of the states... Uh, and, and nothing against the states. I mean, mm. it's my it's my home country, and I love it, of course. But even if you take the guns out of the states, I don't think that that takes the safety mm. factor away, right? Yeah, because yeah. you still have so many of these, uh, you know, dangerous things that can happen. Whether it's theft, whether it's kidnapping, mm. whether it's you know uh, just kids worrying about kids and who they're around. Oh. Uh, so I don't think it's strictly guns. Of course, guns is a huge thing. Um, but I think that Dubai has put a system in place 
They've put some harsh punishments, whether it's financially or jail time. Yeah. Uh, they've made it such an amazing place to live where you really, really don't want to leave. And yeah. so you don't want to risk... Because think about it, Dubai is 15% actual Emiratis, right? Or we talk about the UAE in total, the United Arab Emirates. Mm, yeah. It's 15% actual Emiratis, right, that have the citizenship that you were talking about. The other 85% are people like us, workers who have come in, some people who have just retired here in Dubai. So, And it's a huge melting pot, as you yeah. see. Every day you meet people from all over the world. So how could it be that there's thousands if not millions of americans and thousands of australians and thousands of people from africa and you know all over the world but it's still safe i mean i think that they've given you this amazing place to live and they say hey if you mess up you're going to pay a fine you'll do jail time and then after your jail time you're going to be deported yeah. and so i think that that keeps people in check because we see on the streets, like you're like, oh, there's gonna be a fight, and they don't fight. No one you fights. don't. You don't hear people cursing. The Very streets. rare do you see someone fighting, um, because there's a there's a risk that you'll be deported. Yeah, yeah, right. And you know what? I kind of like that because it forces people to use non-violence to defuse a situation where back in home countries. You would use violence. Right, right, right. You know, you would I think yell, violence scream. should only be in the house, yeah. definitely. Well, something, <laughs> <laughs> well something, as, something like road rage is sort of a little bit of an epidemic now in Australia. Um, you know, every day or so I see one or two videos on Facebook or Instagram or whatnot about people just getting angry because someone beeped them mm. here. If you don't get beeped, you think there's something going on. Right, you know? right, so right. even if you're a little bit triggered by that, um, you know that you can't do anything because it's a quick boot out of the country, you know, because it's if you're going to become violent or abuse someone, there's zero tolerance, which, you know, forces you to be more patient. Yep. Whereas in Australia, I'm not saying people are not patient. Of course, they're patient, but people are more likely to fly off the handle because they realize there's little to no consequences. Right. Yep. Worst case, you get your 15 minutes of fame on Facebook. Yep. Then you disappear off the news, you know, the following day yep. and nothing ends up happening. Yeah. Even if the police get involved in the States, and I'm sure you guys are aware of this, I, a lot of times the consequences are so minimal. Just a warning. Yeah, yeah just a warning, just a warning. or a yeah. phone stop call. the wrist, a little here's fine. Here's pretty serious. Uh, yeah, here's yeah, very you know? serious, definitely. So, now, there's another thing, you know, as Muslims... Right. Well, just real quick, before you move yeah. on to the next thing, as we're talking about safety, yeah. because here in the UAE, as are some other countries like mm. China, for example, there are lots and lots of cameras everywhere. True. And so everything you do is essentially being monitored, right? Not necessarily someone sitting and watching the camera, but if you had an issue with something or there, something happened, it was on camera. I'm sure they've got AI and you, all that, yeah. that that alerts them. Of but course. If you think about but it. But you can get caught speeding. Yeah. You can get caught. I got a ticket once, I swear to God, for changing lanes without using a signal near Maiden mm -hmm. near Maiden Road. Well, all of us. All of us. And, and, and yeah. And you so I, I got a fine. I got yeah. a notification the next day, like, hey, you did whatever. And I knew it because when I did the thing, I was like, oh, I didn't use my signal. <laughs> Something's going to yeah. happen. And yeah. so when I talked to some of my friends back home, Right? They're like, oh, I could never live in a place where everything is being recorded, where everything is being filmed. Well, you have to give your look. That's you an invasion it, of privacy. Yeah. Well, so, look, what are, yeah, what are your well, thoughts you about, about that? Well, look, if you think about if you want to come to the UAE, there's a few things that you're going to submit. You have to submit to a biometrics. You yeah. have to put your fingerprint, the eye check, you know, like this. Medical you take your test. Blood. They do a medical test, yeah. right? Um, now, if you think well, this medical test is not a safety thing, right? This is this is yeah, but I'm sure this is a health a, risk for the country. Yeah, but I'm sure there's, I'm diseases. sure there's blood, of course, of course, blood yeah. on file as of well. Of course, hundred percent crime or something. Right, right, hundred percent, right? But the the way that they're uh, you know portraying it is that we're making sure that yeah. you're healthy and you're and not they do. They don't want HIV. They, they don't, don't want tuberculosis. You know. They don't want some of those you know of course heart to eradicate. Of course, right? Of course, and so they want healthy people, but. Once you submit, you have to understand that you know. we were healthy when we moved here. By the yeah. way, <laughs> <laughs> luckily they don't. I think I put on a little bit more weight. Since <laughs> Me too. I'm my guts coming out since right. I moved. But once that's once, so to some people I know in Australia and, and I've heard in the state, particularly in the states and Canada and all that stuff, that's just unacceptable. They would never submit to a biometrics, yeah. um, you know, because that's anti-privacy. But I can wear whatever I want. I've I've dropped my uh, wallet in a taxi. I've always had it returned to me. I can go to a, um, I can go to a restaurant, put all my stuff down, go out, come back half an hour, and it's there yeah. untouched. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now tell me where the hell in any other country is that possible? Yeah. Look, I, I think in the Gulf in general, not just the UAE, in Kuwait, Oman, mm. um, you know, Bahrain, I think it's pretty, all those countries are pretty much like that. Um, to some degree, though. To some degree, yeah. yeah. Like the other day, I you know called a taxi to my place. 
Got in, put my laptop bag, had a decent amount of cash in there, had my laptop, my whole life's on my laptop, my AirPods, my passport, my Emirates ID. And I was like to the taxi driver, oh, I forgot my, because I forgot something, my son forgot his shoes, believe it or not, at home. <laughs> so he had swimming. So I had to grab yeah, the shoes those otherwise. kids that walk out barefoot and say, 100%. Yeah, their shoes. <laughs> and he's gonna, so, and then people are going to think that, you know, I can't afford to buy him shoes. So I'm like to the taxi driver, look, uh, can you just hold for a sec, please? Did not even give it a second thought. Left my laptop in the car. Left my phone in the car, wasn't worried he's gonna drive off. Right, right. He's gonna go through my bag, went in about a minute, minute and a half, grabbed what I needed for my son, his shoes, put him in a bag, head back to the car. Didn't even check my laptop bag. Didn't even, you know what? Did he maybe open it? Did he maybe go through it? So I think you told me a story uh, one of your first times going to a cafe here. You were working in a cafe, and uh, I think you were going, you needed to use the restroom, and you were packing up all your stuff, so she came to ask you for your check. And you told him, no, no, I'm just going to the bathroom. She said, sir, you can leave everything. Like, yeah, you yeah, to, 100%. You don't have to pack it up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so. and, and I experienced that same thing, by the way, in yeah. China. China has way, way more cameras. Mm. And again, uh, going back home, people just feel like that's an invasion of privacy. And I feel like if you're not doing anything wrong, this is the type of privacy that I want in, in, invaded. In China, my friend lost his wallet when we were there. And we went to the police station and they scanned his face. Right, and they said you went here, and you went here, and you went here, yeah. and you went here. They knew exactly where he went in a matter of minutes, and then we were able to backtrack and find his wallet. Look, it definitely prevents antisocial behavior. Look, I can understand people from you know specifically Western countries not enjoying having their biometrics taken, you know, forced blood tests. Not forced, but if you want to sort of live here, get a blood test done, get it's a forced. medical test done. But the thing is, I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of liberties, such as a little bit of you know specifically what I can say or do, to have safety. Of course. Because if, you're, if, if I have all of my rights and freedoms but I'm not safe, what's the point? Like in Australia, I love Australia. It's my home country. It's provided me with everything and it's allowed me to, you know, create a business, you know, bring up a, a family there. But in Australia, if I hear a little noise at night, I've got to check out the window. You know, I've had people come at 2 o'clock in the morning knock at my door. Hey, is, you know, Michael here? No, there's no Michael here. I don't know if it's just a you know, wrong house or they're trying to test if anyone's home. I've been to my car and I forgot to lock it and the doors were open in the morning and they've been through the car. Me as well. Nothing valuable was there. I've, I've had a situation where they somehow removed the glass from my car window and there was nothing valuable. They somehow managed, I don't know how to remove the glass out of the, the passenger door just to go through my car. So whereas I've never had that here. Here I go to school pickup, I leave the car on because it's yeah. hot with the air condition my laptop bag, my phone, whatever, I come back, I'm not even worried that something's going to happen. So, so you're the reason for all the climate issues we're having now. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently but it that's a normal thing fuel. here in the but UAE. It, even when you go to the Friday prayer, you'll, and especially in the summer, yeah. you'll find cars just running. It's only about 20 or 30 minutes. And they'll keep it and, on. And you'll just find people running. Yeah, and yeah. not even it's running, but you can see a laptop inside yeah. and a phone. Because I've stolen them. You know, I, making, <laughs> I don't go inside the prayer. I just make a whole bunch of money. I get the shoes. I have a shoe store now. You yeah. sell it back to them? Road, I, I get all the used <laughs> shoes, you know? But, but, but it's true. And, and this is why you know, a lot of expats enjoy Dubai or the UAE life. And even in Dubai, and it's such a melting pot, as you mentioned before, you know, with so many different races and, nas and, you know, and cultures. Even religions, right? And that's, a lot why, of that's why UAE wins awards. Yeah. You know, to, you know, what was awards, it? awards, not wars, awards. <laughs> awards. Yeah. Yeah. So, for instance, you know, Dubai always gets, or the UAE always gets some of the safest countries in the world. I remember, was it a year ago, or maybe was it last year or the year before, one of the safest places for women. Yeah. Right? So for women. Do you worry if your wife stays out late? No. And, and this is... And I hope she stays out late, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's a good point. Like, you know, in Australia, I would never be comfortable with my wife going yeah. out late. Yeah. Right? I'd always be worried. Of course. You know? Yeah. In the UAE, and particularly Dubai, I'm not worried about her being late because I'm worried about her safety. I'm worried about her. she's going to be tired for the next day <laughs> yeah. and going to put the pressure on me. Well, five the longer, kids, the right? longer yeah, she's yeah, out, the more, kids, the, the more right? she's spending, right? Right, yeah. Right, <laughs> that too. Especially when the malls right? are open to free The longer she's out, the more money I can see <laughs> off my card, right? <laughs> but also the fact is that I know that she's going to be tired, yeah. right? Especially in a, But that's the UAE. That's Dubai. Yeah. I mean, like in Australia, most 
businesses close at six. Yeah, yeah. that's insane. You know, that's and crazy. yes, there's some places where there's restaurants and cafes, but they're usually shut down by 10 o'clock. Yeah, like last customer, right. maybe 9.45. 9.40, 10 o'clock. Now, yeah. was this the case 10 years ago? Because in the States, what we've seen in the last 10, 15 years with the e-commerce and Amazon mm. and these types of things, the malls in the States are dead. Like, they're yeah. really, really yeah, it's dead. Yeah, still like that. Uh, so, yeah. so, it, so, it is like that in so Australia in Austra- as well? in Australia, we, we have, have, we have, this, we have this only night that it stays late. Thursday. Except for Christmas, it's, it's Thursday night. Yeah. To 9 That's o'clock. That's a weird night. Yeah, yeah. I don't it's payday. Clock, wow, it's payday. Uh, payday's on Thursday. The welfare yeah. checks come. Yeah. All, oh, okay. We don't have checks. We, they used to. They trenches. used to do this traditionally. They used to do payday on Thursdays, right? And they still. They still. Yeah. And they still do it. Yeah. Right. Most of the payments. So, are still on Thursdays. so Thursday night shopping. That's and people will come to nine o'clock. The only time that it would then be, at like all the other malls, all the shops would be closed. The only thing that would be open would be maybe uh, Woolworths or uh, Kmart, cool. or supermarket. Some of the supermarkets and the cinema. Yeah. That's it. Right? Here in the UAE, it doesn't get started until late in the night. Right, right, right. You know, and you can go out at any time of the night. Usually most places close, what, two o'clock? One, two o'clock? Yeah, even during the week. Yeah, even and during you the can week. You get a haircut at midnight. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, you mean, know? I, I know me and you don't do that, but <laughs> I need to get a haircut yeah, right? at midnight. Yeah, I need to get one. Maybe after the hot dog, I'll get <laughs> yeah. one, man, like shave. You know, you can <laughs> order anything. And this is another a, a beauty about being in the UAE is that any time of the day and night, you can still order. There's always going. There's always some business that is still open. Yeah. You know, you know. I I ordered um I ordered some pharmacy you know some medicines today. Yeah. Right. And had it delivered. Yeah. To my door. I can't do that in Australia. Right? Well, and what you're referring to because you can do that in the states too. But what you're referring to is getting on an app, placing the order, and having it to your home within 30 minutes. We're yeah, not talking correct. about Amazon and having. We're not talking it about Amazon. You know, next day like or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're talking thirty minutes. You can have McDonald's delivered, no extra fees for this. You can have KFC delivered. Any like literally even flowers. anything you could Look, think even, about. Even flowers. If you're if you're in the doghouse, because you've upset your wife, in thirty <laughs> minutes you can have flowers delivered. Send me that number. And then to you'll me. still right? be in the doghouse, but right? at least you'll have flowers. At least yeah, you'll be out of the doghouse. <laughs> Send me right? that number to me, man. Right. I need it twice a week. Right, minimum, absolutely. Man. Right, twice a week. Right, so you got, a, you got a new model. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is why. Dubai, particularly out of the, all the Emirates, right? But Dubai is such a great place, and that's why we're so happy. And I'm and I'm hearing that consistent. Now it's not for everybody, but these are things that you learned, right? That we all learned after being here. Yeah, Nobody yeah. said I'm going to move here four years ago because I can get things delivered. No. So what is the main thing? Uh, you came. It sounds like to to so, yeah for an and, entrepreneur. And let me give you some time to yeah. to talk about your business. Actually, no, look, I'll, I'll say some. I'll say something to me, to me. because what, you're sponsoring visa? this episode. What, what visa right? are you? No, so I so initially I came on a business visa, right? Okay. So yeah, and that was through the Free Zone. I was creating a consulting so, what, company so for people that don't know. Free Zone sounds like well, we can go. We can go. Okay, okay. so just generally, what's so a free generally, zone? Generally, there's certain different pathways to get residency in the UAE. Now, the most common one. Is employment right? You're employed by so an employee uh, uh, by Cisco, a company, Apple, whoever. Uh, whatever. Yeah, like this, and you get sponsored by them. So yeah. you're under their sponsorship, and as long as you're employed, you can stay in Dubai uh, or sorry the UAE. Usually, your visa is renewed every two to three years. So, say an employee visa, yeah. correct? Like a normal employee. Yeah, an employee. Yeah. Other okay. path is you create a business. Right, and that's here the path within the UAE. Within the UAE, okay. and you can do it in the mainland, which is you know. You submit to the uh, local courts, you know, or you could do it in the free zones where they usually follow more UK laws. Um, up until last year, um, if it was mainland, you needed an Emirati partner, and then the free zones, you didn't need an Emirati, but now in the mainlands, you don't need. Um, so there's no incentive to open in the free zone? Oh, there's still. So an example is if you open in the free zone, you're following, if there's a dispute, as an example, you. Um, if they're following UK laws, they, you know, there's UK judges as an example, right? So a lot. If you want international clients, as an example, you, you know, they're more comfortable dealing with, you know, a free UK, zone. Yeah, free zone. And, UK and I think laws. this whole visa thing is something we could probably yeah. spend a whole yeah, episode on. Yeah, absolutely. And there's free. And there's, you know, there's other, you know, so you can own property that gets you a visa. You can be a freelancer. That, so there's, and every year, the great thing about I see in the UAE is. There's more and more different type of visas that are open because UAE is making it so easy now to come to the, you know, if you've got something to offer, right. if you can want to have make you. a different, they want you. Right, right, right. And, and it doesn't mean you have to be an entrepreneur. Even from, you know, a maid 
or someone who's building, you know, uh, students, like this, any, stu- yeah. anything, yeah. they want you here, yeah. right? And they're making it easy. And, you know, some people like yourself, you know, your businesses are actually overseas, but you can still be here. But that goes and back right? to our point before why yeah. one of the reasons why I think me and Karim specifically mm. were able to move to Dubai, we didn't have to get a job here. We didn't have to open a business. They made it easy for us. Um, freelance visa. Yeah. A lot of countries sell their visa, the, the passport. So mm. I'm not saying specifically seller, but for example, you might need to buy a property. You know, you might need to invest a certain amount of money into the country. You might have to come, you know, as a you know student, refugee. Whereas with the UAE, they've said to you, hey, if you've yeah. got the means to live here, you don't have to buy a property. I thought yeah. you were a refugee in the UAE until today. Honestly. Until today. So well, uh, well, this uh, pod is, um, you but, know, making everything clear. Yeah. They, but I'm going to say something. As, a, as Muslims is, you know, growing up in a Western country, I was always a minority. Yeah. And it felt good to be in the majority. And what that meant was, you know, so everything's halal. Yeah. Right? So I grew up. As I was mentioning, well, and before. when you say everything halal, you're talking the about food. the stripper. Oh, the, no, food. the strippers. <laughs> sorry, the strippers. Okay, the food is halal. You know, there's they, they don't put alcohol in food. You know, you have to go. You can go get that if you want, but that's in. And I can tell places. you where if you need to know. <laughs> okay. right? Getting hook us up. And and another thing is is around the mosques. You know, where I was, where I was living, it was difficult to get to the mosque, and it was hard to park. There's a mosque. Everywhere, yeah. there is no excuse as a Muslim not to be to attend Friday prayers. Right, of course, right? Because there are mosques everywhere. And there's parking, and I love that fact that I go with my son every week, and we we go to the mosque together. It's you know, my daughter comes, my eldest daughter comes with me. Sometimes my wife will come, and she'll bring the youngest ones with her because she knows I can't handle the younger ones. <laughs> right? I'll lose my shit. Right? <laughs> and um, and so we make it a family experience. Right? Nice. Couldn't do that in Australia. Yeah. Why? Because on Friday we're all working. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or here, you, or you got to park in someone's driveway and get told off to move yeah. your car on Friday. So if you think <laughs> about if you think about it here, you know, it gets to a certain point, schools finish about 11 30 12 o'clock depending on what school well i think when we right. all moved here I don't, you said you've been here two years so i think when you first moved here friday was off. It, it was friday saturdays right. for about a month uh-huh. and then i uh, i think it was november 21 then by december or january 22 it was a normal you know western saturday sunday uh, weekend but friday they you know they, they went from I a five it. day yeah. week right yeah. to a four uh to a four and a half day yeah. week right yeah. because you go now monday through thursday and then we have a half day Friday. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I actually was bummed about that, to be honest. I, I, honestly, I was too. And not even from an Islamic perspective, but just because, uh, you know, on Friday, even trying to do anything, all the schools, all the work, everything is letting it's out at the same time. Getting in and getting and, out. Now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's, uh, it's, it's very, very crowded. But, you, but yeah. you've got an extra half day now, which is good. Like yeah, we get an extra course. half day, yeah. which in yeah. a way turned out to be a good advantage. And you spend it in the no, good, for, good for the kids. <laughs> good for the kids. Not for us. But for us. Yeah, yeah, it's like I've got an extra half day with five kids at home. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. Well, how so about if you're not if if you're if you're not a Muslim because we walk around still and we see that they get, they get two and a half. Days. No, no, I'm not talking about that. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you're not a Muslim. You have to stay all day. No, I mean, that's not what I meant. I was referring to the lifestyle in Dubai and why people are moving here who are non-Muslim as well. Like we've all brought. They a, think it's paradise, right? You know, you think about okay. So look at this, right? In their home countries, you've got a house. You work Monday to Friday. You really don't do anything in the night time. Maybe some sports for yourself or with the kids. Everything closes at six. You don't really have any social life and it's only to the weekend and you're cleaning. If you're earning some good money here, you can have a mate, yeah. right? You can have gardeners. You can have people washing your that car. That was gardeners. <laughs> gardeners. <laughs> gardeners. I, I thought right? you were saying God knows. That, right? <laughs> you can have, you, you know, you've got delivery. You can eat out. Any, all the time if you wanted to, right? And food isn't that expensive here. Yeah. Right, right. All right? Expensive, except for fruit, man. Yeah, the um, fruits are... Uh, fruits are ridiculously expensive. But you know, the, you bring up fruits, and this is not even... It's yeah. just a small thing, but here in the UAE, when you go to buy fruits, right, even if you look at red apples, you'll have maybe five or six different types of red apples, yeah. some from Egypt, some from Kenya, some from here, yeah. some from there. In the States, you've got red apples, green apples, yellow apples, and you don't know where, you know the where they're they from, from, you know? Yeah. So you do have a good selection Yeah, you do have a good selection. As well. But if you, if, you think about, if you think about it, right, so... Now, I live in an area where there's a community feel and there's pools, parks, uh, skateboarding, basketball things, pet, you know, zoos. I don't even need to leave the area. So 
that sort of community feel as well, when you get to know your community, usually your community will have a WhatsApp group, you know, you know your neighbours, you say, hi, how are you doing? The kids go to the pool and they'll meet other kids. I admit to your group and I want a free pool entry. That's right. <laughs> right? We love that, right? So why, so for, for anyone, Muslims, non-Muslims, whatever, if you're living that lifestyle, you're living it up. You're driving the best cars yep. that you probably couldn't afford back home, right? And here in the UAE, you can swap out a car every year. Even now, there's apps where you can just get an, a, a different car on a month, month-to-month basis, Yeah. right? And yeah. I, I use that. Why buy a car when I can... And we have a lot of these things yeah. in the States, but they're not easily as... They're not as yeah. readily available and they're not yeah. as inexpensive, yeah. uh, of course. And, and a lot of these things that you're mentioning, like even a maid or a nanny, this would be something that only the rich people have Absolutely. in the States. Yeah. Absolutely. Know? And it's something here that not everybody has, but lots and lots of people have where it doesn't surprise you at all yeah. that somebody has a, yeah. has a maid or a nanny. There's cleaning. For, you know, if you don't want a nanny, you can hire cleaning companies to come and clean yeah. for far cheaper than you would getting a cleaner back home. Yeah. Right? I remember when I first moved here, I went to the Apple store and there was a, a white guy, an American guy. And obviously I can tell from his accent, he's American. I'm like, where are you from? He's like, from Florida. And I'm like, why are you here? Like, why are you in the UAE? I found it kind of shocking. I had only been here maybe a month or so. And he's like, I came to train people at the Apple store when it opened. I think he was only supposed to be here for four or five months. And he's like, till now, it's been four years. At that time, it had been four years. He, I haven't gone back. Yeah. I've just felt fallen in love with it. So I told him straight up, like, hey, man, as a Muslim, like, I came here for some of the Muslim aspects of yeah. this country. But for you as a non-Muslim, like, what was it? And of course, he mentioned the safety. He mentioned the ease of everything. And we, we haven't even talked. I mean, you, you touched on it briefly about the cleanliness of the country. But it's like the, it's like the heads of this country said, how can we make it perfect for our residents, right? I won't say citizens, right? But, but for everyone living here, how can we make it yeah. with beautiful roads, no trash on the roads, uh, everything is easy to do. A lot of greenery, don't forget, Karim. It's, yeah, and, and, it, people yeah, think desert. And even, the, desert, yeah, and even the discrimination, right? I, you know, the, the, the media is a bit controlled here, but you don't see anti-Hindu. You know, Diwali was just Yeah, they just celebrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, You know, Christmas is celebrated. Easter is celebrated here. The Islamic, I celebrate them all. The, <laughs> <laughs> the Islamic holidays are, uh, you know, and it's open to everybody. Right, yeah. right. Right? And you don't see that, you know, there's no political parties that's using one culture or one race against it. Everyone's welcome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you but don't can, you feel like, the, to me, like in general, not to get too specific, but... The government has your best interests at heart here. Yeah, look, it's a, I think yeah, I think yeah. the government. I think the you know the the. But the it works rulers. for them, right? Yeah. It works for their in their favor, right? Yes. To make it, uh, and I've always explained it to people like when you start a business, right? You put everything on sale. You have your best products out. You make people fall in love with it. Bring yeah. them in, yeah. and and that and that's what they're doing. They're yeah. trying to to run the country almost yeah. like a business yeah. to make it appeal to everyone. Schools are amazing. Yeah, but some people wait, are waiting for the other shoe to drop. There is no other shoe. You yeah. get what what. What the UAE well, is now? Both issues at home. Th- so. <laughs> Look, the rulers here are doing an excellent job, yeah. right? The ben- the ben- it's a benevolent dictatorship, if you think about it, yeah. right? You know, they're not. Uh, everything is for the benefit of the UAE. They can make plans 20, 30 years. You know, one of the things that I like about you know, particularly Dubai is this, um, is it twenty thirty or twenty fifty? They want fifty percent of the of Dubai green. Yeah, and if you go to Al Qudra Lakes, I think I twenty thirty. Been there. Twenty thirty, yeah. Very ambitious. If you target. see, if you see, if you go to Al Qudra Lakes, perfect example of. I remember going there, and they were just starting, and it was all desert. A couple of you know lakes that were building up. Now it's a, it's a it's oasis. an oasis, yeah. right? Right, and that's amazing. If you go back to the West, every all the politicians are you know the it's three to four years. They're always arguing, they're always competing against each other or arguing against somebody else's policy. It's all short-term policy. Well, by the time you get a policy yeah. in effect, yeah. right, and then start to implement it, you're, right, out. you're out. You're the out. next one comes in. He takes changes credit. everything. Pro- or takes credit. Takes credit or changes yeah. everything, yeah. right? Like, well, well, in the West, right, progress is difficult because you have to scratch a lot of people's backs right. who helped you get into that position. And then once you get into that position, you realize you can't make everybody happy. Yeah. Whereas in the UAE, they're like, this is our plan. This is the vision that we have. Of course, they're taking people's opinions, experts' opinions into account. I find any major project, whether it's a theme park, whether it's a major development, whether it's the expo, they hire the best of the best. Like if you were to look at how many hours, like for example, one of the theme parks 
um, I think it was um, Warner Brothers, they, the amount of hours the people that designed that have had on other theme parks all over the world right. was staggering. Right. Mm. So they got the best of the best. It's a, an indoor theme park. Where else can you find an indoor theme park? Right, so right. The, Even SeaWorld. They have SeaWorld that yeah, they just opened indoor. last year in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Yeah. And we went in, uh, I think, May. And May, it's <coughs> super hot here in May. But and I was dreading it. it. And on the way there, my wife was like, no, no, don't worry. It's all indoors. I'm like, how can SeaWorld be indoors? Yeah, it's true indoors. enough, you were with us, right? Yeah, true yeah. enough, it was all yeah. indoors. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So this is, this is the amazing vision that the country has, the, rule that the rulers have. And, um, and that's what I love about it. You know? So every year, it's changing. New developments, new policies. It's it's welcoming and, and look and for non Muslims it's you know there are policies that are favoring them yeah. you know like when I came I remember when I came in you know the the shops you know restaurants had to have the um, curtains during Ramadan so they couldn't right? open right they couldn't open or yeah. they couldn't open now they can yeah right there are places where they can drink right yeah there's even some places where there's uh, non halal food yeah right. So well, when you go to the grocery stores, yeah. right, you can find a section that uh, it will either be Usually I see you. There. Usually I see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love my pork. Right. I love my pork. Right. <laughs> but that's 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 there. That's it's welcoming. Yeah. Right. And they're they're making changes. You know, there's the temples. There's Buddhist temples. There's Hindu temples. Yeah. Sikh temples. There's you know uh, many churches. And this kind of goes against what the majority of people think about the Arab world. The Muslim world, right? They think that we oppress our women. We're Here, backwards. as you said, it's one of the safest places for yeah. women. Dude, my the wife goes out more than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah mine right? too. And I'm telling you, far more than me. Yeah. And she plays sports and she does You everything. could probably afford to play a few right? sports. <laughs> I, I probably could, right? But right now, she's having probably a better social life and a better phys- like sports life than I am, right? right? And yet you would see the West. They, would th- they think that all Muslim women... Uh, indoors, right, serving their men. That right. is definitely not what's happening It's here. not the case with me that at all. Not the case. <laughs> no, that's the goal. That's not the case, but that's our goal. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. I was going to mention the, the beaches that close once a week uh, for, for only uh, girls or only women to go to the beach and swim here in the UAE. Like, yeah. that's, that's an amazing thing. Like, of course, you, our wives could go to the beach anytime they wanted to, yeah. but there's a time that they could go and feel very comfortable that nobody's yeah. going to look at them, nobody's going to gawk at them, nobody's going to whistle at them, anything like and that. And there are different there are different beaches. Look, in because Dubai is such a tourist you know, uh, attraction, if you think about it, you know, they attract many people from different countries. But if you go to Sharjah, as an example, it's more... Conservative traditional. and yeah. traditional. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, and that's what I'm saying is, if you're more Western or more modern, you might want to go to the Kite beaches or the JBR beaches where, you know, but if you're, more, if you're conservative or more traditional, have traditional values, you can go to beaches where they're more family orientated, yeah. right? They're more wearing, you know, wearing more traditional clothes. Definitely. And that's why I say is UAE can be whatever you want. Yeah. Right? In the Western world, it's sort of, moved into a certain direction where you must accept this way now. Yeah. But in the UAE, it's opening. You can live the way you want in UAE as long as you don't hurt anyone and as long as you're not causing trouble. Yeah. That's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's the rule. And just for our listener, this podcast is not going to be a bashing of the Western world, nor no, is it going to be not. focused on the UAE or Dubai. Yeah. But we just thought we'd take this first episode, give us a chance to introduce ourselves, where we are, where we're from. The podcast is called Task Cast Live from Dubai, only because we're shooting from Dubai. Correct. It's not necessarily everything is going to be about yeah. Dubai. Yeah. Um, but definitely we want to hear from our listeners and see what they think. And if they'd like us to touch on certain things, we'll touch on different topics as we go along, how to move to Dubai, what we liked about Dubai, all different kinds of things uh, about Dubai but just in the last few minutes here I wanted to ask you guys since this being our first podcast what what goals do you have for this podcast what were your hopes in starting this podcast what do you hope to get out of it and then my my final question to you would be uh, who would be your dream guest if we could have any guest and inshallah we will get there one day who would be your I, I'm already here but after yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> who would be your dream guest to have just in, in just in well, two look, minutes look, really quickly look, look at the end of the day right my aim of the podcast Right, was to educate people who were interested uh, in, in this region, yeah. right? And that could be lifestyle, could be business, could be real estate, but also expand uh, on what future capabilities are out there. I mean, UAE and many other places in the region are, 
you know, interested in AI and, you know, machine learning and, you know, crypto and all that. Now, for for guests, man, I don't know, man. I, I would love uh, Elon Musk, definitely. Elon Musk, all right. Cool. I'd love to, <laughs> awesome. I'd love to talk awesome. to him. Awesome. We will tag him in every post that Absolutely. we do. <laughs> right, well, I, I follow Elon Musk on Twitter, so I'll start tagging him. And that's all it all takes, about. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's uh, pretty... Um, pretty malleable and he actually does respond i've seen yeah. him respond to a few and people it's that I follow. Him, honestly it is like uh, it, it does well people get to know him you it know? makes you approachable and these days in this day and age you know being approachable is um you know it helps you grow your profile and it makes you mm. humanizes you does i think at the end of the day we're obviously we're all humans but at the end of the day we all have the same you know goals and problems and issues so at the end of the day not one of us is better than the other look me personally because i come from an accounting you know, say numbers, finance, you know, background, um, like, and also obviously now I've made the move to Dubai. I feel like I, for our listeners, mine will be how you can sort of, you know, grow your wealth. Not that I'm a multimillionaire or anything like that. I'm growing just as much as the next person, but I can impart some wisdom from a financial perspective, from a, re, um, a realistic expectations perspective. I think a lot of us jump on social media and, while I love Andrew Tate, we see all of these influencers making hundreds of millions, or that's what they say, and then we start to feel like, hey, um, you know, for example, I saw something the other day, oh, if you're scrolling on your phone and you're not making money, you shouldn't be on your phone. Right. You know, it doesn't work like that. If all of us were making hundreds of millions, money will become irrelevant. You know, it wouldn't have any meaning. Right, so right. I'd like to impart some of that wisdom, plus the, obviously a bit of, you know, I'm living in Dubai, plus, look, I'm... Um, I think I'm a good father and a decent husband, so maybe you know, sprinkle a little bit of magic in there, get the guys out of the doghouse. I've you know, get him. But okay. Yeah, we have to, we're gonna have to uh, bring your wife on this show. Yeah, yeah no, if she comes on, man, I you know, I'm gonna lower my That'll head. That'll be our show. last episode. <laughs> That'll be the last episode. How about you, Kareem? Um, so you know, uh, we were all hanging out one day and we just had a great time. The conversation was flowing well, and we all felt like we brought something a little bit different to the conversation. Um, and we felt like the three of us meshed well, which is very, very important for any podcast, mm -hmm. any business venture, any any gathering, even just friends. And Alhamdulillah, we have been friends before this. This is not yeah. like a, I introduce you guys as if I don't know you, tell us a little bit about you, but we have been friends yeah. for a while now, Alhamdulillah. Oh, um, LeBron James, that's my guess. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron, I love you. I follow you on every team, Miami, Cleveland, the Lakers, Lakers 2024 champion. Sorry. All right. Awesome. Yeah. That'll get him here for sure. For sure. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, together we just thought it would be, it would be fun. Right. I think that was the number one thing. Um, I don't necessarily want to make it a hobby because I don't want to just, you know, waste our time just shooting the shits all the time. Of course. But we thought that we could impart some wisdom on people, give some people an insight into our lives, into the UAE life and even past that, the business life, personal life. Maybe we'll talk about our marriages, whether they failed or succeeded, what, uh, give uh, our our you know view on that and hopefully in the next few episodes we'll have some different guests on and that we can interview them and get uh get their their perspective as well anybody who knows me knows that my dream guest is eminem that is uh, i mean you know people ask who would you like to meet uh who? dead or alive <laughs> my name is dude what? he's off of the podcast, <laughs> he's off of the podcast. i'm what? serious who? <laughs> um so that that would be my dream guest but uh you know Aram. <laughs> Haram. He's here. He's here. <laughs> oh, actually, what about Andrew Tate? Uh, one day. <laughs> uh, this guy's going to get us killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, guys, that was our first episode. I think that that went really, really well. We were all kind of nervous. We didn't know how it would go. Um, nothing was rehearsed, of course. I think that it went really well. Um, for our listener who's out there, we hope that you'll tell somebody else and maybe we'll have two <laughs> listeners on the second episode and we'll just keep growing. So by, if we keep doing that, could you imagine by episode 50, we could have 50 listeners. That oh, would be, man, that's the dream. Yeah, that would be, like yeah. one from every state. That would be yeah. amazing. Each one so, subscribes 10 bucks a month. I think we'll you know, make enough to buy a few properties in the UAE. And 50 times 10? <laughs> I need a calculator. But anyway, 500. Uh, no, 500. He's an accountant. He's so smart, so smart. Anyway, thank you guys so much much for listening please please stay tuned uh follow us uh, on all the social media check out episode number two and uh we can't wait to see you guys soon